The Sparkling Company is a broad sweeping survey of the many meanings, innovations and functions of glass in Britain during the 1700s. And its aim is really to show what it meant to be modern at that time through a lens of glass. We wanted to use neon to convey the sense of modernity um, of the 1700s, the self-conscious awareness of modernity that people felt at that time. It was a really happy coincidence that um, Matthew was speaking at the seminar organised in 2019, the Year of New Glass Now, and he introduced Bagsign, which was just starting up at the time. And at that moment, I was thinking about camp in the 18th century, and it felt like a really good way to make the connection to the modernity that I wanted to conjure up, but also to the notion of camp and serving the queer community uh, in the way that Pack Signs does and supporting them and giving them a platform. What was exciting to me about working with Pack Signs is that it represented a sector of the industry that wasn't really represented at this stage. A lot of neon at this point, until the last like maybe seven to ten years, was very relegated to a commercial industry. So with that, when the project with Corning Museum came up, it was really exciting to work on a project that was based in reframing glass as something that was camp, because honestly, that's how I think of it a lot of the time, is super fragile. You're kind of breathing into the, the object you're creating and imbuing a lot of your own person into it. The letter A covers all of the more basic bends and is a good warm-up letter. It covers the right angle, the double back, and the drop-down bend all in one letter. If you master just three bends, you can do like half the alphabet. The first step in bending A will be measuring the glass. I'll usually, I'll cut the glass first in half, and then that'll leave me with a more manageable length. Use my soapstone, which you use to mark glass because it's heat resistant and it's good at mark making. I'll use my cork to close the system when I have my blow hose attached because this is what I use to put air into the tube. Because once you heat glass up and bend it, it collapses and you don't want that to be the permanent state of your letter. So you put air back in to reform it. When you're heating up the glass, the steps are heat, bend, and then blow. What goes into neon to make it light up is one of two gases usually, which is argon or neon. Neon is sort of a misnomer. Most signs you see that are any color other than red will be filled with argon and then a bead of liquid mercury, which then vaporizes when it's under heat um, to mix with the gas to react with the phosphor, which is the white or yellow coating on the clear glass to make a color. We've introduced the neon sign in an immersive entry point to the exhibition where we evoke Vauxhall Pleasure Gardens, which was London's hottest night spot. You could have dinner outside, you could watch fireworks, you could see contemporary art, you could listen to the latest music, you could have sex in bushes, you could do all the things that we in the 21st century would recognise as being fun. But it was really famous for its lighting, for its lanterns. It had thousands of glass lanterns suspended from trees, which could all be lit in an instant because they were connected by a single fuse soaked in flammable liquid. So at a certain point in the evening, somebody would go out with a, a lit taper, touch one end of the fuse, and all the lights would sparkle on. So that felt like a, a good thing to riff off. And neon, I think, is a great um, contemporary equivalent to that. It's urban, it's eye-catching, it's innovative um, and seedy. All the things that I kind of wanted to conjure up for Vauxhall and for this sense of modernity in, in Britain at that time. Neon is just sort of starting to reach the zeitgeist of fine art and with this exhibit it's really um, sort of solidifying that place in many ways. Corning is a huge museum, very well respected around the world for glass as a medium and I think neon is often left on a separate table to the rest of glass. So for it to be included in such a traditional survey of the medium is really exciting. It's, it definitely is elevating it from the commercial into the art, which is, I think, right, right at this point. In Sparkling Company, glass and the costs of social life in Britain during the 1700s opened on May 22nd and will run through to January 2nd, 2022.